Sometimes there are prospects that really benefit from playing with another big name prospect in previous seasons because what that does is it gets some attention on them. It lets the spotlight shine on them a little bit. And when you look at Clemson, the past couple of seasons, a lot of the attention was about the edge rusher Vic Beasley. But more and more, as people started to tune in to watch Clemson games to pay attention to Vic Beasley, they started to pay attention to somebody else on that defensive line, another edge rusher named Shaq Lawson. And now you're looking on the path to the 2016 NFL Draft. You're looking at the six foot three, 270 pound redshirt junior out of Clemson, who was a part of that team that made it to the national championship game this year. You're wondering if he's going to be a first round pick as well this year. You know, in part because of that attention that was given to him because of playing alongside Vic Beasley. And now that he finally got his chance to shine in 2015, he definitely made the most of his opportunity. And, you know, Shaq Lawson is the type of guy to me that when you watch him, you just see a football player. I don't know if this makes sense or not. But you don't always know that you can quantify it or give a tangible reason why you believe something. It's just something you feel. It's something you know. And you look at him and you say, I know this guy is an NFL player. I know this guy is a starter at the NFL level. The ultimate question is going to be his draft position based off of his potential upside and just how good and effective and potentially dominant he can or can't be as a starter at the NFL level. So let's take a look at Shaq Lawson and kind of you know, see where he falls and see what I think about him as a prospect and what he could do at the NFL level. Now, in terms of his strengths, the first thing that really jumps out to you when you watch him on film is he's really, really good against the run. He sets the edge very, very well. He has a good nose for the football. He really, to me, has a fundamental understanding of how to be a run defender. So he's not somebody that's going to be just pigeonholed as some type of situational pass rusher early on in his NFL career. He has the ability to play the run that defensive coordinators and NFL head coaches are really going to like and really, really value. A really, really well-rounded player, and if anything, you would make the argument that his biggest strength is his ability to play the run at a consistent level and at a very high level at that. This is a guy that made a lot of plays in the running game. This was a guy that you could really count on to be, frankly, a bit of a weapon on the defensive line against the run. Uh, but obviously, you're talking about edge rushers, you're talking about defensive ends, you know, the ability to play the run is nice, but at the end of the day, you get paid, you get made off of your ability to get to the quarterback. And when I look at Shaq Lawson, he's got a nice array of pass rush moves. Obviously, it's something you could always work on and improve, but this is a guy that has nice power and therefore uses that power as an effective bull rusher, even at all of 270 pounds. I think he's got a nice spin move that at times I was able to see him display at Clemson in 2015 that if he could really hone and he could really make a viable weapon, it keeps offensive tackles off balance even more. Therefore, as a result, improving the threat of the bull rush, improving the effectiveness of the bull rush, and opening up other things as well. I think he's starting to learn how to develop rip and swim moves and being able to use his hands to disengage blockers and be able to start, stop, and start again to be able to get to the quarterback. He's got a really good pass rush motor. I really like his relentlessness, his effort level, his consistency, and his attempts to try and get to the quarterback. Now, a lot of times you look at edge rushers and even really explosive big-name edge rushers, and once they don't get there initially, they're kind of out of the play. They're kind of a not factor, but you don't have to worry about that with Shaq Lawson. This is a guy that in a pass rush situation is going to continue to come time after time after time. All the while, both in the running game and in the passing game on the defensive side of the ball, does a really good job of uh, maintaining his discipline and contain. He's not a guy that will sag in too far and break the integrity of the defense. He's not a guy that will go way too far outside and just go blowing five yards past the quarterback. Therefore, again, uh, you know, really affecting negatively the integrity of the defense. You know, here's a guy that, like I said, maintaining that contain makes it more difficult for mobile quarterbacks to be able to move on the run, especially to his side of the field. I think he also has some really good football instincts, some good football intelligence and awareness, and you can see this play out on film over the past couple of years. You can see where Shaq Lawson had a good feel for the football, a good nose for the football, a good understanding of his role, his responsibility, and what was expected out of him. And for a college player, that's really, really nice to see, and it's something that you would expect will be a big asset to him at the NFL level. Now, 
when we're talking about Shaq Lawson, you know, his ability to play the run, a guy that was a productive pass rusher at Clemson, you're sitting there and you're saying, that's a really well-balanced defensive end. This is a guy that should be a big-time starter at the NFL level. He should be a top-ten pick. Well, there are some flaws in his game that really make me question just how much upside he truly has at the NFL level. Uh, first off, he's seems to consistently be late off the ball, like really, really bad. Like on the other side, Kevin Dodd would fly off of the ball, and Shaq Lawson, it seems like, at times, has lead shoes, cement shoes, if you will. I mean, he's just late getting off the ball, which is a really big concern because he's not a very explosive guy to begin with. I don't think he has an incredible amount of athleticism. He doesn't really have great initial burst or quickness. So when you take the fact that he doesn't recognize a snap very well on a consistent basis, and it bears out over film over the last two years. And then he has questionable burst and initial quickness on top of that. You really wonder if he's going to be at a huge disadvantage at the NFL level because consistently offensive tackles are going to be able to set themselves up and be able to guide and shift and direct Shaq Lawson in the direction in the way that they want to. You know, Shaq Lawson, a lot of times when the ball is snapped, is already at a big disadvantage. And because of some of his all-around skill, he was able to overcome that and compensate for some of that at the college level. Is he going to be able to do that at the NFL level? And another problem that comes along with his lack of great initial burst or initial explosive quickness, his snack re recognition, as a result, he tries to compensate in another way. He tries to jump the snap sometimes, which can lead to some bad offsides penalties. And as you know, those could be back-breaking five-yard penalties sometimes because instead of getting the sack, instead of stopping a team on third and eight, you've given them five more yards. Now they get into a third and manageable situation. You know, that's something he's really going to have to work on at the NFL level. He's going to have to get into an NFL strength training and conditioning uh, program. He could probably use some more plyometric work. You know, He's never going to be a fireball off of the end. But he needs to get quicker, and he needs to get a little more explosive. Now, sometimes we talk about guys that lack quickness and lack explosiveness, and we automatically assume that that's who they always have to be. Again, I will emphasize that with the right program, the right training, you know, the right emphasis on the right things, especially, like I said, from a plyometric standpoint, guys can improve their initial burst. They can improve their initial quickness. And my hope would be that Shaq Lawson would be able to do that at the NFL level because he's going to need to. Another thing that concerns me about him is his balance. At times, he can get off balance. I think he does a relatively solid job of keeping his pad level where he needs to. He has good knee bend. But sometimes he can be sitting there and trying to bull rush so much, or he can be sitting there trying to spin. He can be sitting there trying to get off of the offensive tackle, trying to shed the block, that he can lose control of his body and get off of balance. And once you get off of balance as a defensive lineman, you're pretty much out of the entire play. Because you can get pancaked back, you can get thrown down to the side, you can just get held in place, and the offensive tackle can do whatever they want to you. That's something else, a little bit of technique work in terms of better body control, being able to better maintain his balance on a more consistent basis. That's something he's really going to have to work on. Uh, the biggest concern for Shaq Lawson, though, I think, and it ties in again to that lack of great initial burst and overall athleticism, hip flexibility, is that I question what schemes he can really fit into. Some people may talk about bulking him up 20 pounds and making him a 3-4 defensive end, but I don't know if he's that powerful or powerful enough to be able to play there. As an outside linebacker in a 3-4, I think he can forget about it. I just don't think he has the wiggle, the hip flexibility, the initial burst you would want out of a 3-4 backer coming off of the edge. So he's pretty much limited to me to being a 4-3 defensive end, and some teams might look at him and say with his lack of explosiveness that he's only a left end, a base power end in a 4-3, and some teams might not value that as much as others. And when you talk about the fact that you basically take 3-4 defenses completely off the table for this guy, it leaves him only really eligible and only really on the board for 4-3 teams, and as a result, certain teams aren't going to be looking his direction. Other teams are going to take a pass on him, you know, it could really affect his draft stock negatively. In terms of an NFL comparison for Shaq Lawson, the closest I think I could come up with was Charles Johnson from the Carolina Panthers. Uh, pretty good against the run. Solid pass rush repertoire, although like with Charles Johnson when he came out of college, he needed some work there. I think Shaq Lawson still needs some work there, some refinement, some expansion of the pass rush moves he has. Because, like I said, he's never going to be a great fireball athlete. He's going to have to be able to compensate and win in other ways. 
And the best way to do that is to improve your technique and improve your pass rush repertoire to help keep offensive tackles off balance. Um, but with that said, it's that lack of big time burst. You know, I think Charles Johnson is a little bit better athlete, but he's not a fireball again off of the edge. And I think it could take Shaq Lawson some time to really fit, fill out at the NFL level, fit his role, find his spot, and make a name for himself. But once he does, he could be a really, really productive, borderline Pro Bowl caliber player. Uh, ultimately, when I look at Shaq Lawson, I see a solid but not spectacular uh, prospect. Definitely, to me, an NFL star. Does he really have the upside to become a star? I think that's a big, serious, significant question, especially when you're talking about guys and where you're going to draft them. In the first round, do you want to just take starters or do you want to take stars and guys with star potential? You know, a guy like Shaq Lawson, that I think most people agree is an NFL player and an NFL starter, might disagree on just how much upside he truly has and how dominant of an edge rusher he can be, especially when you're talking about taking a defensive end. You know, a guy with limited explosiveness and perhaps limited uh, upside as a force off of the edge as a pure speed rusher, are those the type of guys you really want to take on the day one? Or are those more guys that you take in day two, maybe round two, round three? You know, and that's going to be a very important question that Shaq Lawson is going to have to answer. You know, I don't know that he's going to work out all that particularly well at the combine either, especially when it comes to the 40 time if he runs. And if he doesn't have a great 40 time and he shows himself to be kind of slow, slow afoot and kind of uh, stiff in the hips, you know, again, it could knock his draft stock down. But this is still a good player, a guy that's very good against the run, who has strength and power as a pass rusher. A surprising array of pass rush moves. Like I said, I think I've seen some people that have talked about that he needs – a lot of work on his pass rush repertoire. I thought it was better than he was given credit for, frankly. Uh, that lack of explosiveness and burst, though, could really limit his upside at the NFL level. And he's really only suited for a 4-3 defense. So as a result, 3-4 teams pretty much take him off of the table. And certain 4-3 teams, based off of what they want out of their defensive ends, he might not be a fit for them either. So he's not a player for everybody, but he is a player for somebody. And I still think he is ultimately a first-round talent because of his strength, because of the pass rush moves he already has, I'm giving him some credit in the sense that he can be, work on his snap, snap, snap recognition, easy for me to say. He can work on his initial burst and quickness. You know, These are things that he can work on, his balance in particular. I think this is a first-round talent, a guy that probably should be taken somewhere in the 15 to 25 range. It would not surprise me if he was an early day two pick because of that lack of explosiveness, that lack of big-time physical uh, quickness and upside. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if he was an early round two pick. But I got to say, if you're running a four three defense and your team takes Shaq Lawson in the bottom portion of round one, the early portion of round two, you would have to feel that you got yourself a really solid football player. He may never be a star. He may never be a star. But I think he's going to be a solid eight to ten year starter at the NFL level.